<clears throat> I call this meeting of the Northeast Independent School District to order. I'm sorry. On behalf of the trustees, I would like to welcome you to this evening's meeting of the Northeast Independent School Board. This is a business meeting of the board held in public. We appreciate your attendance and request your respectful attention. We welcome your comments during the matters from the floor section of the agenda. If you signed up to address a specific action item, you will be called at that time. Finally, I would like to remind you that it is the mission of Northeast to challenge and encourage each student to achieve and demonstrate academic excellence, technical skills, and responsible citizenship. Item three, invocation and pledge of allegiance. A, Bradley Middle School, Mr. Bloomer. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam President, Dr. Gotardi, members of the board, executive staff. It is my privilege to stand before you tonight and recognize two outstanding Bradley Bears. In the four years that I have done this, I think this is the most difficult evening to select. Um, I had so many students that I could have selected from. It took me a long time to select the two that I have tonight because of the amazing student body that we have at Bradley Middle School. Tonight, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Nilo Mackey, an eighth grader at Bradley. He is joined by his, uh, he's joined by his mother, Malin. Uh, his father, Lance, and his sister, Maya, couldn't be here this night, this evening. And Maya is currently a student at ISA. Nilo is involved in our science UIL, our chess club, our coding club. He's a straight A student and one of only four students currently taking geometry at Bradley. Nilo's favorite subject is history, and he plans to attend ISA uh, after Bradley. Nilo will lead us in the pledge this evening and has a gift for each member of the board and executive staff tonight, which I think you'll find is very unique. Presenting the inspirational and motivational message this evening is an eighth grader from Bradley Middle School named Lizette Lopez. Lizette is joined by her mom and dad, Mr. Casey and Leslie Lopez. Lizette is a three sports star at Bradley. She is the vice president of our National Junior Honor Society. She is um, a office aide for us first period. She plans to attend Churchill High School in the fall where she hopes to continue to be a three sports star by playing volleyball, basketball, and running track. Her favorite subject is Algebra One and she will be delivering our motivational message this evening. Nilo. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Good evening. My name is Lizette Lopez and I am an eighth grader at Bradley Middle School and would like to express what motivation means to me. M, Moxie is what people say I walk around with each day because I have nerves of steel and am determined with so much heart and will to never keep opportunity at bay. O, organization helps me stay the course with love and support from teachers and parents, of course. T, thoughtfulness runs through my veins. I care about the well-being of others to make their lives great. I, inspired by people like Miss Della Santos, who taught me that we can all be anything. Zip codes and gender don't mean a thing if you're determined to catch your dream. V, vitality is what you will see on the court. That love of life comes out in each and every sport. Coaches and teammates help me with that, and in the future, I hope to give back. A, aspirations for me aren't just in the clouds. They're at the front of my mind with all of my know-hows. T, Teamwork is something I learned in first grade because life will be lonely if you're battling all day with no one by your side encouraging you with every stride. I, intelligence is God's gift to me, which has grown and bloomed each and every day throughout my career here in NEISD. O, optimism excludes from my soul. I know I'm prepared to take on much more, so whether it's uphill or downhill from here, I'm ready to do battle throughout the years. N, nutty is what my friends may say help them and me get through the day. Life's too short not to have some fun with everything I've ever done. Motivation is definitely not something I lack, so I thank my parents who patted my back and encouraged me and helped me to achieve my best because I feel I am prepared to take on life's test. Nilo and Lizette, 
Would you please come forward? We have some certificates for you, and Mrs. Perkins is going to present them. Mr. Bloomer, for a picture, please. Thank you both so much. I don't know why they did that. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Have a good night. <laughs> Item four, recognitions A, Cadet of the Year, Dr. Gotardi. Thank you, Madam President, board members, ladies and gentlemen. It's really my honor and my privilege this evening to make some general uh, comments about our JROTC program in the school district for the 2017-2018 school year. So before I turn it over to Dr. Micah, I would like to share with the audience today the accomplishments of this group of kids in the Northeast Independent School District. We have, out of this bunch, we have five academy appointments, 29 college scholarships through either academics and or ROTC programs, 38 military enlistments, 20 cadets selected to attend the American Legion sponsored girls or boys state. That brings back fond memories because I got to go to boys state a long time ago. <laughs> Hundreds of service projects or events and thousands of other honors of community service work in the Northeast Independent School District. So on behalf of the executive staff, congratulations to our JROTC program. We have several very, very distinguished awards and trophies to give out this evening. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Micah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gotardi. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, and guests, I would like to ask Colonel Henson to come to the podium to address this item. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, members of the executive staff, these are the, these are the great times we get to share. I don't want to forget about the parents who's without your product, we don't have anything to do here. <laughs> and to my cohorts, my JROTC instructors that I get the, the opportunity to work with every day and I wish you would please stand Thank you. It is with great pleasure that I am able to introduce Mr. Robert Madison of the Scottish Rite of San Antonio. The organization is instrumental in promoting and recognizing those JROTC cadets throughout Central and South Texas that display outstanding Americanism and leadership. This year, the Scottish Rite will recognize and present the award to the Northeast Independent School District JROTC Cadet of the Year. This cadet demonstrates the highest ideals of Americanism in deed, in conduct, and demonstrated potential for outstanding leadership with a proven academic record. She will receive a certificate, a medal, and a saber. The cadet will receive or the cadet school will receive a traveling trophy to display next year for the entire school year in, at their campus. The 2018 NEISD JROTC Cadet of the Year is Cadet Major Rachel Widman.
Cadet Widman is a senior at Winston Churchill High School, is the daughter of Drs. Lawrence and Ellen Widman. Please stand. And Rachel, Rachel has two brothers, Jacob, a new sophomore at Texas A&M University, and Samuel, a sophomore at Churchill High School. Thank you. She has completed four years in the JROTC program and is on track to graduate with honors as a summa cum laude and member of the National Honor Society. One of Rachel's greatest traits is her passion for serving others. She has earned the Presidential Volunteer Service Award each year for the past three years and is on track to earn it again this year with a cumulative 480 hours of community service for the four years. In addition to her outstanding, outstanding achievement in the JROTC program and as a student at Winston Churchill, High School. Rachel is a graduate of the 2017 American Legion Auxiliary Girls Program held in Seguin, Texas, and the 2017 National Sojourners Youth Leadership Conference at Freedom Foundation in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. She is completing her senior year with many leadership and academic achievements and recognition. She has accumulated more than three $300,000 in scholarship offers, including an Army ROTC scholarship and an appointment to the United States Coast Guard. This fall, Rachel will be joining the Coast Guard Cla Academy class of 2022 and will pursue a degree in government. Upon commissioning, Rachel hopes to serve as a search and rescue helicopter pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, Major Rachel Widman. Bob. Congratulations again, and thank you all for being here. Best of luck to you next year. Thank you. Item B, presentation of the Superintendent's Award, Dr. Micah. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, and guests. Once again, I'd like to ask Colonel Henson to address this item. 
Madam President, I'll continue if you don't yes. mind. Yes. The superintendent's trophy was initiated in 1988 and it's designed to recognize the district's high school JROTC battalion that excels in overall performance for the 13 competitive activities or events conducted throughout the school year. The trophy is a traveling trophy presented annually. This year's competitive events evaluated the knowledge, the skills, discipline, fitness, and performance of the individual cadets forming the teams and representing their respective JROTC battalions. Dr. Gotardi will present the trophy to the 2018 winner, Theodore Roosevelt High School. Rough Rider Battalion, post. They'll turn. Group, about, face, post. The trophy will be received by Battalion Commander, Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Taun Jennifer Wendell, and Cadet Command Sergeant Major Enrique Smith. With the support of the various team commanders and selected staff of the Rough Rider Battalion. Go ahead, sir. Can we, can we get Mr. Mr. Eckert, the principal, and our staff from Roosevelt? Item C, Gold Instructor Awards, Dr. Micah. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests, once again, Colonel Henson, if you would address this item for us. Madam President, it is with great honor that I am able to announce the Gold Instructor Awards for three of our outstanding JROTC instructors. For demonstrating the highest degree of excellence as a JROTC instructor, their ability to integrate and apply the techniques and standards necessary to develop a successful program exhibited your commitment to excellence. By stimulating motivation among instructors and cadets through service learning projects, competitions, and overall program success, you have displayed the professionalism and expertise required to inspire all within your community. You are indeed a role model for all other JROTC instructors across the nation. Signed, Jason O'Halloran, Colonel Aviation Commanding. And these awards go to Master Sergeant Retired Marshantia Johnson, Roosevelt High School.
Master Sergeant John T. Arena, Roosevelt, I mean, excuse me, Reagan High School. And First Sergeant Hector Reyes Lee High School. Item D, NEISD Student Volunteer of the Year. Ms. Chancellor. Mm -hmm. Madam President, board members, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests, I'd like to ask our district's volunteer resources manager, Brooke Pate, to please come up and talk about this awesome volunteer. Good evening. On behalf of the volunteer program, I'm honored to be here tonight to present the NEISD Student Volunteer of the Year. In March, each of our high schools nominated a Student Volunteer of the Year. The Volunteer Office reviewed each campus nomination and the top three students were interviewed. The individual district winner is selected not only for their contribution to the community, but also for their leadership that they provide to their campus and to other students. The recipient of this year's NEISD Student Volunteer of the Year Award exemplifies the 360 degree student. Zach Huggins, Huggins is a senior at Churchill High School. He's an active member and leader of the Winner's Circle. He serves as an officer in the orchestra and he also serves on the board of directors for the National Honor Society. Zach has dedicated over 155 hours to his school and his community through different organizations he's involved with. Over the last year, he's volunteered for Habitat for Humanity, helped with orchestra camp, and through NHS, helped create college application seminars for juniors so that, that they're better prepared to apply for college. Zach is very involved with his church where he's a cellist in the music ministry, as well as a member of the youth program leadership team. For the last five summers, he's served on the San Antonio Neighbors Mission trip, spending a week on the south side of town repainting homes for families in need. Zach believes the greatest impact his volunteering has had on the community is seeing people that he has served in the past pay it forward. Mm -hmm. Zach is an intelligent and humble young man and was so much fun to interview. He's looking forward to attending Texas A&M University in the fall. Whoop. <laughs> He's here tonight with his mother, Susan, his counselor, Seth, and I believe I saw Mr. Oxley. Mr. Oxley is here, the principal. So this year's recipient of the NEISD Student Volunteer of the Year Award is Zach Huggins from Churchill High School. Item E, Recognition of Life-Saving Measures, Dr. Micah. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests, I would like to ask Patrick Valdez, the principal of the Academy of Creative Education, to come to the podium to address this item. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, members of the executive staff, 
Uh, the Academy of Creative Education Spring 2018 Certified Nursing Class began February 5th, 2018. The CNA program at ACE is provided by NEISD and Career Tech through a partnership with Good Careers Academy. On Monday, April 2nd, 2018, 10 ACE CNA students began their clinicals at Heartland Healthcare San Antonio. The students immediately were praised by LVNs, RNs, and administrators at Heartland for their professionalism, knowledge, and skills. On Tuesday, April 3rd, while ACE and CNA student Meredith Aldridge was providing care to a resident, she recognized that the student was not receiving adequate room air oxygen due to becoming asphy asphyxiated. Meredith's close observations, early recognition, and expeditious response resulted in the resident not having further complications. The next day, April 4th, during clinical trials, ACE and CNA student Jennifer Vargas was observing the lunch meal, and she recognized a student choking. Jennifer's conscientious response and expedited reporting resulted in the facility's nursing staff to observe and assess the resident in adequate time, providing crucial and accurate observation information to the nurse in charge and speech therapist led to the speech therapist changing the resident's diet from re regular to pureed. Jennifer's observations also led to the initiation of speech therapy services for this resident who will now undergo additional testing. Jennifer's knowledge and sound understanding of lecture material instilled in her classroom training prepared her for such an event. Jennifer and Meredith are both leading examples of, a nurse, aid, of nurse aid students who go above and beyond. It's my honor to introduce you to them. Jennifer Aldrich and Meredith, I'm sorry, Jennifer Vargas and Meredith Aldrich. Item F, 2018 TMEA All-State Musician, Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Gronin, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. I'd like to ask Julie Shore to present this item. Thank you. Good evening. Tonight we'd like to recognize the remaining Northeast students that earned placement in the TMEA All-State Ensemble. These students earned placement out of over 60,000 students from across the state of Texas. Northeast had a total of 33 all-state music members, which is quite incredible. We'd like to congratulate the following students. All of these students this evening are from Reagan High School. First, we have Jimilee Diermock Orchestra. Spencer Landon. from band. Kurt Lautenschlager from band. <laughs> Philip LeClaire, band. <laughs> Andy Lee, band. <laughs> Mackenzie Tupper, band. And the amazing man behind these incredible students, the head director at Reagan High School, Mr. Dan Morrison. Congratulations to these great kids. We're going to take a picture, so scoosh together. Stay there so your parents can take pictures of you. <laughs> Thank 
you so much. Item G, 2018 District 26 6A Soccer Championship, Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Gronin, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. I would like to ask Ms. Brenda Shelton, the principal of Reagan High School, to address these soccer champions. I am so excited to say, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, these are the most amazing young men you could ever want to meet. And I'm telling you, I'll wait till they come in. I'll keep myself under control. Please, oh, to begin with, may I introduce you to our outstanding coach because he's standing there. This is Coach Gilbert Villarreal and his son, Evan Villarreal. <laughs> outstanding man, incredible character, great coach. And our young men that we value so much, Eugene Albo. Emmy Alcantara, Lizzie Araujo, Fabrizio Bernal, Ricky Cruz, Santi Della Torre. Slow down. Yes, sir. I get excited. You know that about me. Okay. Okay. I'm supposed to call it, tell you the ones that are not here. Okay. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to go much slower now. Alec De Leon, Mariano Inaira, not here. Ben Evanson is not here. Matt Foster. The next young man is not here, Jacob Galan. Sergio Gonzalez is not here. Sebastian Hurst. Ricky Huerta. Rafael Jimenez is not here with us. Yadot Curry is not here with us. Miguel Leva is here. Pablo Lamelin, am I close? Okay, very good. Carter Lavelle. Matt Martinez. Isaiah McAllenis is not here. Michael Morell. Jared Olson, Caleb Powell, Uwen Rodriguez, Marco Saldana is not here, Alex Salgada, Luis Salgada is not here, Landon Sharon and Adrian Villa Gomez. And I know this is a busy night, but to my team and to the people that I work for, gentlemen, for four years I've had the pleasure of watching you and cheering for you and watching you work with your coach. You are incredible young men. 
And I want to tell you the journey that you took, the integrity that you showed, the sportsmanship and the character are something to be called for. You were very fun. The journey was exciting. I know you probably heard me yell a time or two. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, thank you. Thank you for what this will do for you in life. You're a great group of young men. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> Congratulations, y'all. The board will now adjourn into executive session pursuant to the following sections of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Texas Government Code Section 551.071, private consultation with the board's attorney. 551.072, discussing purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. 551.074, to discuss personnel or to hear complaints against personnel. And the time is 6.07. The board will now reconvene into open session. The time is 7.13. Item 7, matters from executive session A, personnel including but not limited to administrative appointments, pursuant to government code section 551.074. One, possible action regarding routine personnel including but not limited to administrative appointments. Do I have a motion to approve as presented in executive session? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Wheat. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, the motion carries. Item two, possible action regarding non-renewal of chapter 21 term contract employee. Do I have a motion to improve as discussed in executive session? So moved. Thank you, Mr. White. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. <coughs> there can be no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, the motion carries. Item three, possible action regarding proposed recommendation for non-renewal of Chapter 21 term contract employee. Do I have a motion to approve as presented in executive session? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Wheat. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. There can be no discussion. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Item four, introductions. Dr. Gotardi. Thank you, Madam President, board members, and guests. It's my honor this evening to introduce our new director of the Northeast School of the Arts, Ms. Sarah Pagona. Sarah? Sarah joined the Northeast family in 2006. Prior to being named the director of NISA, she was the assistant principal at Driscoll Middle School. Ms. Pagona received a bachelor's degree in art in 2004 from Trinity University. She earned a master's degree in teacher leadership in 2010 from Lamar University. Ms. Pagona has 12 years in education. Welcome and congratulations, Sarah. We also have, have with us this evening a Boy Scout in the audience, Carson Payne. Carson, stand up, please. 
Carson is an eighth grader at Tex Hill Middle School, and he's getting his citizenship in the community badge. Carson, welcome to our board meeting tonight. And I'm, and I'm assuming you've got your mom with you tonight. Thanks for being with us. And that concludes our introductions. Thank you very Thank much. You. Item B, possible action on the purchase exchange lease or value of real property pursuant to government code section 551.072, no action. C, possible action regarding consultation with board's attorney pursuant to government code section 551.071, one, pending and or possible litigation. A, possible action regarding settlement of pending employment discrimination lawsuit. Do I have a motion to approve as discussed in executive session? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? second. Thank you, Mr. White. There second. can be no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Item eight, comments from individual board members. A, state board rule on board member continuing education announcement of credit. Um, Senate Bill 1566 changed the Texas Education Code section 11.159 regarding our announcement <coughs> of continuing education credit. So now it has to be done um, prior to the trustee's election or, or appointment. And the minutes need to reflect that. Um, so, I'm going to say let the minutes reflect that board members Shannon Grona, Bridget Perkins, Sandy Huey, Tony Hasso, Joseph Trevino, Jim Wheat, and Ed White have met or exceeded the required continuing education hours. Thank you. Item nine, board business. A, possible action regarding 2018 advocacy resolution. Ms. Huey. Do you want to discuss this? Um, I'm passing around um, uh, just a real quick snapshot of the advocacy agenda process that the Texas Association of School Boards uses to set their legislative priorities for the two years. Um, and in even numbered years, everything is reassessed, readdressed, um, and basically all the resolutions that were uh, passed in the, in the last two years are gone and we're starting back over. We did, have not changed our cornerstone principles or our priorities, but as you can see from our where we are with the resolutions right now, we as a district can suggest resolutions that are used by the governmental relations staff at TASB to formulate their work in the next two years as we go through the next biennium. Um, in the past, We've had one continuing resolution that has been presented to them and accepted. Um, and as you can see from um, your notes that it, we, we support a background check for school board candidates to confirm candidate qualifications and to, and to support the disqualification standard of a candidate who's been convicted of a felony. That one has been accepted for the last uh, two bienniums. We also submitted one last year that supports an interim study on school finance. I do not recommend that we bring that resolution forward as we did have an interim study. Um, I can't say that it was successful or anything, but we did have an interim study. So um, it, we do have until June the something to submit more resolutions if so desired. Does anyone have any thoughts or anything on resolutions? There's quite a few resolutions submitted by districts all over the state, and a lot of them apply specifically to that district or a small number of districts. So um, we're kind of free range, wide open on things that we could submit that may impact us directly or maybe only shared by a few districts. So the resolutions give us a, a very wide open mm -hmm. uh, field. So the um, resolution that was attached, that was the 2016-18, uh -huh. those are going away? Right, so we would have to resubmit okay. any resolution that we'd either done in the past or any new one. So all the 2016-18 resolutions are gone Okay. And we will them. do new ones for 2018, 2020. Okay. So should we resubmit the criminal background check one? That is that is our option. Okay. We may do well, that. Right. And this is an action item, so yes, we could resubmit. We can vote to resubmit that resolution. Okay. And it would go. The process is it would go to the TASB government relations staff, and they review all resolutions, 
anyone that's in question or duplicates goes to the resolutions committee and they review all of those. Those are then presented at convention in September and the delegate assembly votes on them. Okay. So, and so this, um, in fact, I, I brought a few extras if staff would like to see these. Um, this is from the TASB website, just the, the process of, if you may want to see what we're doing, um, of, of how we're doing. We have another meeting of the Legislative Advisory Council at the June uh, Summer Leadership here in San Antonio, and so we will meet again there. That's a, a group that I chair as chair of the legislative. I'll be having some great times with that incredible group of people from all over the state of Texas and uh, some really, really good, solid discussions about the legislative process. So, so um, have you all started developing a list of resolutions yet? It's, it's all, we haven't seen any of them yet. They are okay. being submitted now. I'll see them probably sometime this summer. I'll, I'll get okay. a preview of them and then, and then they go through committee. So do you have any um, suggestions regarding this? Well, any of our resolutions, we have to remember, I mean, there's things that are, of course, our hot button topics, you know, oh, finance yes. and, and all of that stuff. But we have to remember, too, that those are also framed in the cornerstone principles, whether it's vouchers and stuff like that. So we don't want to repeat those. Right. That being said, yes. yeah. Yes, Ms. King. I just wanted to let the board know that the deadline is July the 3rd. Oh, okay. July the 3rd. Okay. So, so we have time to yes, think about and, this. And Mrs. Caldwell, Deb Caldwell has offered to assist like she has in the past. Mm -hmm. She does a great job. She does do a great job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe what we could do is know that this is coming and everybody kind of think about it and then bring it back. Yeah, I'd like to suggest or just okay. maybe put on our little the back burners of our minds that as we are facing some financial challenges that we maybe craft or create some type of resolution that's more specific to us, declining okay. enrollment to... Uh, and impact of charters and things like that and mm -hmm. um, just something that maybe would go along those lines even if it's not accepted as a resolution it is still published I was gonna say it's still out there it is still mm -hmm. published mm -hmm. the 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 all of the delegate assembly gets a massive handbook and all resolutions that were submitted are in there all the ones that were declined or are duplicates are also listed so even if it didn't become a, a formal resolution it would still be part of the information out there when, okay so. and as we're meeting with legislative representatives coming up mm -hmm. and as we have some ideas that we want to put forward uh, especially in the finance area which is clearly Crucial. clearly the biggest issue we have before us I think if we have some real solid ideas mm -hmm. two or three of them and we say these are the two or three that we really want to push we push them with TASB and we also talk to the representatives about them that can be a great legislative agenda, a great way that we go forward. Um, but that if we don't have those really crafted in the right way, then, then they, they fall on deaf ears um, where, where nobody wants to hear them. They fall on no ears. No ears. I mean, basically. Well, the, and they and may fall on yes. no ears anyway. Yes. And, yes. and I know that. Yeah. But that but if they're crafted right and we have them together and we present them correctly, um, then we've done everything we can do. and, and and we, we try to move forward from there. I think that's such a great point when we're at such a critical point at a time in uh, the legislative issues facing public education and it's becoming a bigger and bigger piece of, of our news, our, of our national news, not just here, but as other states are getting involved. In fact, if you're not busy next Saturday, I would highly recommend you head to Houston to Discovery Green where there'll be a rally to support teachers and to support public education wear purple because it is nonpartisan. It is not blue. It is not red. Mm -hmm. It is purple. And I would, uh, I plan to be there. I'm not great in the heat, but this is, this is extremely important. So they are not protesting. They are not walking out of classes. They are not doing um, what some of other states have had to do uh, to do what was best for their children. Um, but they do want to, to show that there is support for teachers and for public education out there. So meet you in Houston next Saturday. Come on. So the three things I'm seeing are the resubmission criminal back background check and then something regarding declining enrollment and then finance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or how those tie together, maybe those two things tie together or something like that. 
but to work, oh, go ahead. I would offer that the next two Monday nights where we have budget study sessions. So between the two budget study sessions and the fact that staff can be working with Deb Caldwell to craft uh, a couple of agenda items for us to discuss at the budget study sessions, I feel very good that we'll have one or two very strong resolutions that we can move forward and see if they get accepted. I love that idea because, and, and we have such a gem in, in, in Deb Caldwell. I mean, that's, I don't even like saying her name in front of the TASB government relations staff because I don't want them to steal her. But <laughs> I just use her, I'm gonna give her a, a pseudonym or something like that, a new name. But so I'm, so at this point, we're not going to take any action on this agenda. We, we do not need to. Right. I mean, we could go ahead and, and do the criminal one, but because it's in there, but I, I think we're fine just waiting until I we think get we everything wait together. Until yeah. we have it all together. That would be my suggestion. Yeah. Does everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. I'll just say one more thing. Um, thank you, Sandy, for knowing all of this. You know, you go to a lot of extra meetings and you're such a big part of this. And we certainly appreciate that we get you uh, to be right at our meetings and share all of this vital information. Thanks. So thank you again for all your extra work. We appreciate it. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's great fun in a sad sort of way. <laughs> it's a frustrating sort of way sometimes, but it's, it needs to be done. And there's a terrific group of people. I'm not the only one that steps up. I mean, there's a wonderful group of people around the state that this is their passion, their life. And, um, we had a very great, uh, come up into this week, this past week as, is one of the strongest women I know in the state on legislative issues. She's a trustee in another district and uh, almost ended up in a runoff because she was one vote short, one vote wow. out of several thousand cast. And as the absentees came in and the military ballots came in, she's now up. So she's got the 50% plus one and her opponent was heavily, heavily funded by a group of multimillionaires, billionaires out of West Texas, not even local people. Mm. This is in North Texas, and her opponent was funded by them. So we have a great um, lesson to learn when it comes to legislative issues and the importance of what we're doing to get the word to our legislators. So, Thank so thanks. You. So that leads into item B, possible action regarding candidate endorsement for the TASB Board of Directors Region 20E. <laughs> Um, Sandy has been our <laughs> representative, and um, she has agreed to re-up in that position. Would someone like to make a motion? I um, so make a motion. Or is it <laughs> I so make a motion <laughs> that we keep her second. in that space. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Perkins, for the motion, and thank you, Mr. Wheat, for the second. Um, so we reaffirm support for Mrs. Sandy Huey for the Region 20 Position E on the TASB Board of Directors. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Should I abstain? No. You don't have to. <laughs> no, you don't have to abstain, I don't think. Thank you, and I appreciate it because as chair of the legislative committee would look really funny if I didn't come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So thank you all. Okay, so yes. that motion carries. I'm not sure I finished the wording on that. Sandy, how many years have you been there now? Since 2009. So this 59. will be my last term. We appreciate we it. Are yeah, term limited, we are term limited as TASB directors, yes. Yeah, for the ones that didn't know it, uh, 12, after 12 years on there, you, you can't continue right. serving on TASB. You're out. <laughs> yeah. I served nine. I didn't do my last Right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your service, Mr. White. <laughs> yes. And thank you, Sandy, for continuing to do that for us. Absolutely. Thank okay. You. Uh, item 10, new business for possible board action. A, resolutions. One, possible action regarding resolution to consider alternative graduation requirements. Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Grona, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, and guests. I'd like to ask Mr. Gary Hardcastle, our senior director for learning support services, to address this item. Good evening, Madam President, board members, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, and guests. The Texas Education Code prohibited a student who entered the ninth grade before the 2011-12 school year from receiving a high school diploma unless the student performed satisfactory on each of the exit level Texas Assessment of Knowledge and Skills or tax tests. 
These tests included English language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies. Prior to 2002, students were required to meet performance measures on the Texas Assessment of Academic Skills, or the old TAS test as we know it, and the Texas Educational Assessment of Minimal Skills, or TEAMS test. The 85th legislative session passed Senate Bill 463, which established provisions to allow certain former students who have completed the curriculum requirements for graduation but have not performed satisfactory on any of those tests to qualify for a high school diploma by meeting certain alternative requirements. These requirements are contained in the corresponding provisions of the Texas Administrative Code and are listed in the resolution that we're asking you to approve tonight. The administrative, administrative staff recommends that the Board of Trustees approve the resolution as presented. Does anybody have any questions regarding that? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the resolution as presented? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Wheat. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mrs. Huey. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you. Item B, board policy one, possible action regarding board policy update 110, second and final reading. Ms. King. Thank you, Madam President, board members, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. We are asking the board's approval on the second and final reading of update 110. Uh, and I wanted to uh, answer Mrs. Huey's question from the, uh, the last presentation. She asked why trustee was being uh, uh, scratched through. Mm. And the reason it is, is because TASB, to be consistent with TASB's wording on their policies, they uh, reference board members as a board member and not a trustee. So all their policies are uh, reference board members as a board member and not a trustee. Okay. All right, so does anybody else have any questions about this? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the second and final reading of attached local policy included in update 110 as presented? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Item C, instruction and campus administration. One, possible action regarding approval of employment contracts. Dr. Newman. Thank you, President Grona, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Joel Trevino, our executive director for human resources, to address this item. Good evening, Good evening. Madam President, board members, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. Um, every year we come around this time uh, to request the approval of the renewal of all employment contracts in the district. Um, we are required by Texas Education Code for the board to approve these contracts. Uh, the budget has been allocated as such because salaries comprise about just 86, 87 percent of the budget for the district. So at this point, we request your approval for this board agenda item. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Trevino or comments? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? the proposed recommendation for renewal of employment contracts. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Wheat. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. You. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Item two, possible action regarding 2018-2019 administrative training program. Dr. Micah. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. I would like to ask Mr. Joe Reason, ex Joe Reasons, Executive Director for Campus Administration, to come and address this. Thank you, Dr. Micah. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention uh, to the revised list that you were provided earlier. On behalf of the three Executive Directors for School Administration, that list contained the names of 28 individuals we recommend for admission to the 2018-2019 Northeast Administrative Training Program. This process began in March of this year. All those for these educators, the process really began when they took their first graduate class. Most of them had been encouraged to pursue an administrative appointment for many reasons, but mostly including their ability to lead others. Initially, 
43 candidates, more than we have ever had applied, uh, applied for the program. Of that number, after a rigorous process of evaluation by a panel of the three executive directors and principals, Brenda Shelton of Reagan High School, Marcus Alvarez from Wood Middle School, and Rachel Yates from Stahl Elementary, 36 were selected to be interviewed. After further review of the qualifications based on six basic competencies and measures, the 28 names you have before you are recommended for the cohort that begins its work, uh, work this coming August. Thank you, Mr. Reasons. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding the list? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the applicants selected for the 2018-2019 administrative program as presented? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Reasons. Thank you. Item three, possible action regarding TEA low attendance waiver, Dr. Micah. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests. As you can see, Ms. Borman, Executive Director for Learning Support Services, is already at the podium to address this. Thank you, Dr. Micah. Thank you. Tonight, we're seeking uh, permission to apply for a low attendance waiver uh, from TEA. This waiver allows a district to uh, request an instructional day be exempt from our ADA calculations. The day we're requesting is December 8th, 2017. So we're requesting permission to apply for the waiver. Does anybody have any questions? Can we find out why that yeah. particular day? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the although I know, yeah. <laughs> the attendance Still. for that day was 84.6. Mm -hmm. Our average attendance is 95.2. That was a snow day. Okay. And we um, had our students attend school because we know it's a safe place for them to be. Thank you. Okay, I was going to ask that question as well. Any other questions? <laughs> Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the request to apply for the Texas Education Agency low attendance waiver? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Huey. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. The motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Borman. Thank you. Item D, operations. One, possible action regarding 2015 bond program air rifle electronic target and scoring system upgrades, project four campuses, schematic design and bid authorization approval. Mr. Clary. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests, Mr. Sullivan is at the podium to make this presentation. Good evening, Madam President. Good evening. Members of the board, Dr. Gotardi. Executive staff and guests, uh, our first presentation tonight for the 2015 bond program uh, deals with the air rifle uh, targeting system. This is the agenda we're going to follow. As a way of introduction, in the 2011 bond program, we've already completed three campuses and provided the new targeting system, which is manufactured by Zeus. This targeting system is um, a pretty high-end uh, system that's used at the Olympics. So it's uh, considered to be one of the best out there. And it's also used by the JRTC national organizations to put on the competitions that our district competes in uh, annually. The, the 2015 bond program includes funding to uh, equip the four other campuses which are uh, listed here, Johnson, Roosevelt, Madison, and Reagan, with the same targeting system that we already have at the three campuses that were completed in the 2011 bond program. The Madison and Reagan campuses are, uh, the air rifle targeting infrastructure is already included in those projects that have already been bid. And one will be awarded tonight, which is the Reagan project. Madison was awarded last month. Johnson and Roosevelt, though, these are the only projects, bond projects at those campuses. So tonight, we're recommending uh, hiring Garza Architects as the architect that will design the infrastructure to go into these campuses. And then we'll use our DOC or JOC contract uh, bid delivery method to recommend to you a contract that will do this work next summer, the summer of 2019. So these are the four schools included in this uh, project. 
It'll include equipping these schools with the new uh, Zeus air rifle target and scoring system. Each school will get eight uh, targeting systems. And then uh, we have one spare. And this will give the opportunity for all the campuses to have the same targeting system with which to practice on. Uh, the ranges, the range galleries also receive a large HD TV monitor where the targeting system scoring can be displayed for each of the shooters that are on the range so that the parents or other members in the gallery can see uh, real time what's happening on the range since, as you know, shooting the air rifles, it's a very small target and a very small projectile, so it, it's very difficult from looking from the eye just to be able to see how the shooter's doing. So the HD TV monitors provide that visual uh, cueing for their scoring. This is the system uh, that's downrange. And the monitor that's shown here is what the students have uh, at, at their firing point with which to see how each of their previous rounds uh, impacted the target so they can gauge what kind of correction they need to make uh, to get a higher score. We have budgeted a half million dollars for this project. Um, we are in budget at this point to move forward with the construction of the Johnson and Roosevelt infrastructure installations and the funding for the other infrastructure installations at Reagan and Madison has already been included in those projects. And then the purchase of the 32 targeting systems from Zeus. Our schedule is to complete the design uh, by the early fall of 2018, uh, bid out the project and come back to you in December with the contractor that's gonna do the infrastructure installations at Johnson and Roosevelt. And then all campuses will receive their targeting system installations next summer, uh, with the last project being Reagan having theirs uh, installed by the September-October time frame, uh, which is a project under Guido Brothers construction. Madison is under the uh, F.A. Nunley company, and that project sh should be completed by the early summer, June-July time frame. But all four campuses will have the targets online uh, by the early fall of next year. So our recommendation tonight is to approve uh, this presentation and authorize us to go out to bid uh, following the completion of the construction documents for the Johnson and Roosevelt projects and to use the Zeus targeting system for the purchase order to purchase the new targeting systems for the 2015 bond program. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the schematic design presentation for the 2015 Bond Air Rifle Electronic Target and Scoring System Upgrades Project and authorize the full development of design and construction documents for this project and the purchase of the new targeting systems from Zeus and grant the superintendent, associate superintendent for operations and the executive director of construction management and engineering authority to execute the necessary contracts to support execution of this project. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Wheat. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. The motion carries. Item two, possible action regarding 2015 bond program middle school cafetorium stage lighting and equipment upgrades project. Three campuses, schematic design and bid award approval. Mr. Clary, Mr. Sullivan. I just passed it on. He's, he's sitting there for a while, right? <laughs> our next uh, agenda item concerns um, upgrading three of our existing cafetoriums with new uh, stage lighting and equipment upgrades. This is the agenda we're going to follow. This project is being coordinated in-house through our construction planning and design department. And uh, our recommendation tonight is for us to hire a Texas Scenic Company, who is a specialist in this type of work, uh, to do the um, lighting upgrades and purchase the new stage curtain and so forth. These are the campuses included in this project, Driscoll, White, and Wood Middle School. Uh, the project has three components. Uh, we're going to change out the current theatrical lighting and make it LED lighting which is more cost effective and gives a better light uh, for the performances. 
Uh, we're going to replace the sound control boards and speakers at each of these three middle schools. And uh, all three schools will get a new stage curve. We have two different companies that are going to be performing the work. Texas Scenic uh, has the majority of the contract uh, to put in the stage curtain and the new lighting system. And then we'll be purchasing the sound control boards from multimedia specialties for the three campuses. Total award value for these uh, projects, 336.085. We had budgeted $750,000 for this project uh, back in, in the uh, 2015 bond planning. So that will allow us to transfer $413,915 back into our bond program contingency account. The timeline is to complete the design uh, and with your recommendation tonight, then award the contract to the Texas Scenic Company and Multimedia Specialties to procure the lighting, the sound boards, and the uh, stage curtains and do this work over the summer period with all the work completed in time for the middle school performances that will occur beginning uh, in the fall on through into next school year. So our recommendation uh, is to approve the bid award to Texas Scenic and Multimedia Specialties for the aforementioned work at the three campuses noted. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions regarding this item? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the schematic design presentation for the 2015 Bond Middle School Cafetorium Stage Lighting and Equipment Upgrades Project? and to award the construction contracts for this project to Texas Scenic Company Stage Lighting Upgrades and Stage Curtain Replacement for a total bid cost of $228,310, $228,310, and Multimedia Specialties Sound System Upgrades for a total bid cost of $107,775, and grant the Superintendent, Associate Superintendent for Operations and the Executive Director of Construction Management and Engineering authority to execute these contracts. So moved. Thank you, Mr. White. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Wheat. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. the motion carries. Item three, possible action regarding 2015 bond program, campus intercom and clock systems upgrades, project schematic design and bid award approval. Mr. Clary, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Madam President. Our third presentation tonight involves improvements at seven schools for intercom and clock systems. This is the agenda we're going to follow for this presentation. Again, our coordinator for this work is, is in-house with our construction planning and design department, and the recommended contractor that will do this work is Beckwith Electronic Engineering Company. <laughs> The project has a, a couple of components. The first component is to install new intercom system controls at six schools, Redland Oaks, Northwood, West mm -hmm. Avenue, and Woodstone are included in this agenda item. Kruger's intercom system was included in the agenda item when we awarded the Kruger Middle School project to Guido Brothers Construction. And the district CTE center work is included in the agenda item that was awarded to George General Contract. We'll also be uh, upgrading and installing new clock systems at Encino Park Elementary School and replacing the master controller or the brains of the clock system at Northwood and West Avenue so that it, it will be inter integrated with and work with the bell system uh, at those schools. So the six schools that are shown for intercom are shown here. And then these are the schools, the three schools where we're doing the clock system upgrades. So you can see Northwood and West Avenue appear on both lists, which is why we need to do the uh, master controller upgrade so the clock system will work with the new intercom system. We already received uh, bids uh, from Beckwith Electronic Engineering Company of 110421 to do the work at the four schools uh, for intercom plus the three schools for clocks and as I mentioned previously Kruger and District CTE Center costs are already rolled up in those projects which have been previously approved by the board. We have budgeted $125,000 for this um, 
program element and uh, with the bid of 110421 we'll be able to transfer 14,759 back into our global contingency account. Our timeline is to do all the work at the schools with the exception of the district CTE center before the start of next school year. So everybody will get the new intercom systems and new clocks with the exception of the district CTE center because the work is rolled up in that project which was not which will not conclude until December of this year. At the, and at that time their intercom system will be, will be operational. So our recommendation tonight is to uh, approve this recommendation for bid award to the Beckwith Electronic Engineering Company for 110421 to do the intercom system upgrades at the four schools noted and the three schools noted for clocks uh, for this uh, summer. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Anybody have any questions regarding this? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the schematic design presentation for the 2015 Bond Campus Intercom and Clock Systems Upgrade <coughs> Project and award the construction contract for this project to the Beckwith Electronic Engineering Company Intercom and Clock Upgrades for a total bid cost of $110,421 and to grant the Superintendent, Associate Superintendent for Operations and the Executive Director of Construction Management and Engineering authority to execute these contracts. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Wheat. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I oppose. The motion carries. Item four, possible action regarding 2015 bond program, Northeast Agriscience Phase Two Facility Improvements Project, Ag Engineering Fabrication Shop and Meat Processing Lab, bid award approval. Mr. Cleary, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, my last presentation this evening concerns the Northeast Agriscience Program and, and a recommendation to award the Phase Two Facility Addition Project this evening. This is the agenda we will follow. This is the design team. I'd like to, at this point, introduce uh, the representatives from Garza Bomberg and Associates, our project architect, Mr. James Davis, principal partner, and assisted by Gabrielle Rodriguez, who's the project architect. Thank you all for being here. And they're assisted by a very capable team of, of engineers, uh, many of whom have worked on previous uh, projects at the Madison Complex. This is our agri-science facility, and as you know, in a previous bond program, uh, we, we completed the first phase of this project, which included the main academic center and four project centers, uh, along with uh, the fish ponds. This project will begin the second phase of that master development plan, uh, which builds the new meat processing and ag engineering facilities uh, the total program area for this phase two building is a little over 25,000 square feet. So it's not an insignificant facility. It's a pretty good sized facility that we'll take. Uh, currently the campus uh, uses some old facilities in the main academic building over at Madison High School for these programs, which are, let me just tell you, they're very out of date, what we have over there. So this is really gonna bring them up to a point where the, the curriculum can really take off. As you know, the agri-science program is the largest magnet program in our school district with over 500 students. So our new project area uh, for our phase two addition is here in this green grass area that's along the front entry drive between the railroad tracks and the main driveway. Schematically, uh, this is how that building fits in within the rest of the agri-science center. A little bit closer view uh, we have in yellow is really your ag engineering program area which has a lot of open spaces where they can work on equipment trailers different types of farm pieces expose the students to, to how to care and maintain and, and repair and then in the tan color area that's going to be your meat processing lab a little closer view of the floor plan you can see we have some classroom areas office areas and uh, and then the instructional areas. I will point out that the meat processing lab, since they're actually working with real meat that's gonna be processed and sold, the temperature in that area is not unlike what you would find if you went to Sam's or Costco and you went into the frozen, or excuse me, into the produce area where they keep it at kind of like a, 
little over 30, 32, 33 cool. degrees. That's what the temperature will be throughout that entire classroom area. Because mm -hmm. the meat will move around in different areas as the students uh, are taught how to process it. So it'd be a pretty chilling environment for them. <laughs> We'll be providing coats. Uh, they'll have to bring their own. Uh, the architect has come up with the design architecture, architecturally that mimics uh, the same architecture we have on the, the main center. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing that same theme. Mm -hmm. It's really good, doesn't it? Yeah. And in terms of our contract award, our recommendation tonight is to award the project to Satterfield and Ponticus Construction, who was the second low bidder. And you may know that we typically award to our low bidder about 80% of the time, second low about 15 to 20% of the time, and very rarely beyond that. Usually it's the first or second low. In this case, uh, the scoring system from the eight evaluators recommended to you, Satterfield and Ponticus. Now, usually Mr. White will ask me a question about this, best value selection, so in anticipation of that, and this being his last <laughs> board meeting, I thought I'd go ahead and include those slides just so we could Cut to the chase. <laughs> so these are the eight evaluators that evaluated this uh, proposal along the top. And you can see the scores on a scale of 0 to 100 that each of the contractors received. Mm -hmm. And if you note, all eight evaluators selected Settlefield and Pontica says the best value contractor. Mm -hmm. And they ended up with an aggregate score of 87.19 points. Now I'd like at this point just to introduce the Vice President of that company who's with us in attendance tonight, Mr. Brad Shearer, and his son, uh, Business Development Manager, Kalen Shearer. Thank you all for being here. So you can see they scored the highest aggregate points, but the low bidder scored really in fourth place. So a little bit more detail, uh, the evaluation system breaks out the contractor score in eight components. And you can see that if you look at the top slide, Summit Building and Design, who was the low bidder, only scored first place in one of the eight components, his price. He had the best price. But other than that, he scored pretty much wow. fours and fives. He got a three in his safety record, but he pretty much he scored at the bottom end, end of the scale. And we didn't judge him as being a very um, good general contractor to do this project. Versus Satterfield and Plantikas, you can see he scored three ones, uh, three twos, a three, and a four. Overall, they had a very good score, and they were ranked number one out of the group, and that's why we're recommending tonight for your consideration. We had budgeted um, a program amount for this project back in our bond program, and with the award, of, with the award recommendation this evening, we're going to need to transfer into this project account 350k uh, to balance the project because we're slightly over budget. This is a, a snapshot of how the project evolved beginning in August of 2015 when the bond program was, was put together, all the way through of May of 2018, some two and a half years later. You can see that uh, through the design stages, Mr. Davis and I felt the project was in budget, but as we got to the end of the construction documents, we saw the need to recommend to you that we felt we were gonna be over budget and we were a little bit farther over budget than we anticipated but pretty close to our anticipated cost back in February when we went out for bid. To put that in further perspective, these are projects that have all been within the last six months. And you can see as the average cost of construction, the AgriScience project falls in kind of in the middle uh, mm -hmm. between a low of 279 for our BAC field houses to a high of 351 for our new pool facility. So we're not disappointed, so, so to speak, with the outcome here. We were hoping it would be a little less, but it's not out of the realm of what we anticipated based on current market conditions, what we thought the price may come in at. So we don't think that the bid is in any way overstated. In fact, if you were to look at the five bids, the average bid price for the five contractors was about 8.35 million, mm -hmm. and Satterfield is under that budget by about 275,000. So they do have a very competitive price and have a very good set of credentials, which is why they're recommended. Our timeline is uh, with your approval this evening uh, to award the contract to Satterfield and Ponticus with construction to commence in June of this year. And it's a 16 month duration project with then finishing up at, in September of next year. 
Now, um, let's give you a quick update on our bond program since last we uh, looked at the financials. All the projects on the next series of slides have already been awarded by you and are either under construction or completed. If the, in the far right hand column it's a green box with white lettering, it was under budget, and if it's an orange box with black lettering, it was over budget. We've actually awarded over $300 million worth of our bond construction program to date. We've got about $32, $33 million to go. And you can see right here in the middle of this slide, the AgriScience project uh, comes in as uh, one of our over budget projects. But if you look here in the last uh, award of about 17 projects, we've only had three projects over and most of the projects are under. And again, this is my Goldilocks theory of construction management where we're going to get some projects that are going to be um, underfunded. We didn't put enough money in our budget. Some projects are going to be uh, coming under budget and we're going to have some projects that are going to be just right. And if we've done a good job at the end of the bond program, we should have money left over that uh, you can spend on other initiatives. So, so far, uh, we have earned uh, a We've increased our contingency fund balance by $8.259 million to date. However, we still have some projects to go. This is what's left on our list. And so we have some projects that we're, we're anticipating are going to be over budget, shown in orange, and some that are going to be un under budget or at budget, shown in green. And we anticipate that the next six months we're going to be bringing you budgets that are going to use $2.8 million of our contingency. So in the aggregate, uh, we anticipate having a contingency fund balance of $20.5 million, with $15 million of that being uh, under the control of the board and Dr. Gattardi, and $5.5 million being in our, in our construction account. And as I mentioned, we're about 90% uh, bid out so far in our bond program, with about $33 million to go. So our recommendation this evening is to award this contract for AgriScience to Satterfield and Ponticus Construction. Uh, to build the facilities that were uh, previously approved by the board at the February board meeting, the 25,000 square feet facility, uh, with a construction cost of $8,073,000, requiring an increase to the program budget of 350k, which we have available within our construction contingency account. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions regarding this project? Seeing none, do I have a motion to recommend that the district contract with Satterfield and Pontique's construction at a total bid cost of $8,073,000 for the 2015 bond Northeast AgriScience Phase Two Facility Improvements Project and to grant the superintendent, associate superintendent for operations and executive director of construction management and engineering authority to execute this contract. So, so move. Everybody at once. <laughs> Mrs. Perkins gets the motion I, and I didn't do it. Oh, it wasn't all. it was Huey. Okay, see I'm so confused. And I've seconded. Okay. Ms. Huey had made the motion and Mr. White seconded it. Do I have a all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Thank you very much. And, and thank, thank you to Mr. Sullivan Davis and Mr. Ms. Rodriguez and the Shearer Father Son team for being here tonight. We appreciate you being here. And Mr. and Mrs. Guido. Have, oh, I'm Madam sorry. Madam President, if you'd allow me, I have some introductions to make for the consent agenda, which is going to be the next. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Sullivan. You, I was. If I could do that. Yes, you may. Um, if I could, when I read your name, if you just stand and be recognized. Uh, with us for the air rifle project and the rest of innovation project, Jose, okay. Jose Castorini with Garza Architects. Okay. Uh, Ian Von Winkle, who is the president of MS2 Consulting Engineers for the Kitchen HVAC Upgrades, and the contractor that will be recommended for that project is Elsie Mosel, and we have Jose Sabias. Sabias, thank you for being here. Uh, we have Trey Zool for Elementary School Bid Package 4 Walking Tracks, who is the project uh, engineer. We have um, George Peck from Civil Engineering Consultants, who's the division manager, and he's representing elementary school walking tracks bid package five. 
We have Brandon White, Gerd Enterprises, recommended for award of the Bid Package 5 Elementary School Walking Track Project, Project Manager with Gerd Enterprises. We have uh, Marianne and Tom Guido, uh, the owners of Guido Brothers Construction, who are recommended for award of the Reagan High School contract this evening. We have Nikki Maroney, uh, Alamo Architects, uh, who designed the Reagan High School project that's recommended for award this evening. We have Chris Lammers, owner of CJ Lammers and Associates, who also was uh, architect on the restroom renovation projects. And then as previously introduced, uh, the uh, Brad and Caitlin Shearer are the representing S&P Construction who are going to do our restroom renovations project this summer, pending your approval this evening. That's all my introductions. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking out in the crowd well enough. And Mr. Sullivan, you do an amazing job. I just want to thank you for your talent and your time and your commitment. And you just, every time you do one of these presentations and you're close to budget, it just amazes me. So thank you. Thank you're you. a wizard. Appreciate it. Um, good. <laughs> okay. Item E, consent. One, business services. A, consideration and approval of an order by the Board of Trustees of the Northeast Independent School District authorizing the issuance of Northeast Independent School District fixed rate unlimited tax refunding bonds, series 2018. B, Consideration and approval of an order by the Board of Trustees of the Northeast Independent School District authorizing the issuance of Northeast Independent School District variable rate and limited tax refunding bonds, Series 2018. C, waiver of penalties and interest. D, approved settlement agreement with insurer to cover hail damage roofing claims. E, budget amendment number five. F, donations. G, 50,000 purchases. Two, operations. A, 2015 bond program, Reagan High School Fine Arts and JROTC Facility Additions and Renovations Construction Manager at Risk Project Bid Award Approval B. 2015 bond special education restroom renovations project, 14 campuses bid award approval. C. 2015 bond program, campus restroom renovations project, five campuses bid award approval. D. 2015 bond elementary school walking tracks bid package four project bid award approval. E, 2015 bond elementary school walking tracks, bid package five, project bid award approval. F, 2015 bond district facility operations, MEP upgrades, bid package 1C, project bid award approval. G, 2015 bond program, Northwood Elementary School re-roofing and roof related work, project bid authorization approval. H, 2015 bond program, Ridgeview Elementary School, re-roofing and roof-related work project bid authorization approval. I, indefinite delivery quantity roof maintenance and roof-related work at various district facilities, contracted services bid award approval, m and program. J, 2016 hail damage program, year two and three roof repair and replacement plan consultant contract approval. K, easement dedication for drainage streets, utilities and various service agreements. Reagan High School Campus. L, easement dedication for drainage, streets, utilities, and various service agreements, Tuscany Heights Elementary School Campus. M, professional services contracts, construction contracts, and related contract amendments supporting the 2011 and 2015 bond design and construction requirements. Three, minutes from April 2018. Four, end of consent. Do I have a board member wishing to pull an item from consent? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve consent? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Item 11, reports. A, financial statement review of expenditures that has been provided for you. B, awarded bid report. Before I do matters from the floor, <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of our board president, board members, executive staff, uh, tonight is uh, Mr. Ed White's last board meeting. 
and it's also Mrs. Perkins' last regular board meeting. And I just did a quick back of the envelope calculation a little while ago. <laughs> 22 years of service, 20 years of service, that's 42 years of service. Roughly 35 board meetings a year comes to 1,470 board meetings that these two individuals have attended. And folks, y'all know that they go to an awful lot of events in the district. They're a huge supporter. I mean, I, huge supporters don't even the, the right words. Just a big advocate for what we do in the Northeast Independent School District. I can't tell you how much I'm going to miss both of these two individuals. Executive staff's going to miss both of them. But on behalf of um, many people, many principals, many teachers, and a whole bunch of kiddos in this district, we certainly want to thank you. We appreciate what you have done. You have been in the Northeast Independent School District over the last 22 years where we've really done an awful lot of great things in this school district in the way of growth, new schools, new construction, uh, just continuing that tradition of excellence. And I think on behalf of everyone that's here tonight, um, Mrs. Grona had a very good speech ready to go, but as you can tell, she <laughs> <laughs> a little touched by this whole moment. And uh, on behalf of all of us, we just want to say thank you so much for what you've done for Northeast Independent School District. Thank you, Dr. Gotardi. <laughs> I couldn't get through it. I just couldn't get through it. Um, okay, item 12, matters from the floor. The trustees welcome comments from members of the public during this time of the meeting. Generally, board members do not respond to public comments during the meeting, although members may request further information or a future agenda item on a matter raised during public comment. As explained fully in the board's written procedures for this time, the matters from the floor portion is a limited public forum. Accordingly, speakers may present on a topic related to district business for up to three minutes, but are not permitted to make one personal complaints about an individual staff or board member that should be raised using the district's grievance policies. Two, a personnel action. Three, a student disciplinary matter. Four, a complaint about a particular student. Five, or pending litigation. Any person who persists in speaking on these topics after being directed not to do so will lose the remainder of their time to speak and may lose their privilege of addressing the board at future meetings. We also welcome written comments at any time, either through email at board at neisd.net or by mail care of the superintendent's office at 8961 Tesoro Drive, 6th Floor, San Antonio, Texas, 78217. Ms. Huey. Selena Valdez. Hi, good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, and guests. My name is Selena Valdez, and my address is 9033 Arrow Street, 78217. I am the president of the Northeast Education Association. As the elected president, I hold a charge to my members that I will represent them when there is any force that is threatening to take away their rights under the Texas Education Code. And that is exactly what the District of Innovation is meant to do. While I am thankful that the Northeast Education Association has had a seat at the table being on the DOI committee, I still believe that the Northeast ISD teachers' voices have not been heard. It is my duty to inform my members of repercussions that could happen if the Northeast ISD becomes a District of Innovation School District. These are some of the same concerns that I've been vocal about in my DOI committees. I've shared this with Dr. Newman and with Mr. Trevino. I have asked my members to also share these concerns. I've called on them to reach out to their school board members I've called on them to reach out to their homeowner associations and also to the community members they have access to. At our April 3rd meeting, Mr. Hardcastle mentioned that they were going to research and look into comparable school districts, and one that he specifically mentioned was CyFair ISD. I would like to inform you that they chose not to become a district of innovation. They did this because they knew it was going to undermine the public education and ultimately the rights of their employees. District innovation is not a positive thing that we're trying to sell to the public. 
It is a very long exemption list that mostly includes exemptions that have nothing to do with innovation, but instead have to do with stripping away quality safeguards from students, parents, and educators. Throughout the meetings that I attended for DOI, the word transparent was used repeatedly. I would really like to believe that executive board members are transparent with our school board members as well, and hope that you've been able to ask these similar questions that I've asked several times. I would like to share some of the language that other school districts of DOI have used in their policy that's there to protect their teachers. Southwest ISD DOI policy states that their membership on the policy developing committee for the purpose of writing policies to replace those exempt under DOI shall include a minimum of 50% professional teaching staff. In regards to the school start date, teachers may not be required to teach in excess of 187 days in a school year. Round Rock ISD, their DOI policy states in regards to the school start date that teachers may not be required to teach in excess of 187 days in a school year. Hector County ISD, DOI policy states in regards to the school start date, the calendar exemption does not affect the number of contract days for teachers, which is currently 187 days in a school year. I'm sure you see the point. So in the spirit of transparency, teachers respectfully request that you add this simple sentence that so many other districts have done in their DOI policy of first day instruction. The Northeast Education Association does support true innovation, innovation that leads to educational practices that inspire our students. When sitting in the DEIC presentation. Okay. Your time is up, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Patsy Esterline. I have a quick question before we start. Does my time start after I address everything or right when I first start speaking? It's when you first start speaking. Okay. <laughs> That's why this will be very brief. Good evening all, I'm Patsy Osterline. I'm the president of the Northeast American Federation of Teachers. My address is 6800 Park 10 Boulevard, 78213. Tonight I want to speak about regulation DGB, employee rights and privileges that has eight sections. We as an employee organization need to meet with our members during their lunch time if we are to educate them about tax recertification elections, the importance of voting, et cetera. The district allows organizations such as SAMS and Costco to set up a table to recruit members during all lunches. However, employee organizations cannot be on district premises during work hours, according to number five under this policy. Employee organizations are not the enemy. We are already district employees have who have decided to be protected by liability and occupational insurance, seek credit counseling, obtain pet insurance, purchase a car or a home, or refinance one, request a discount on hotels, theme parks, movie tickets, car rentals or moving vans, and buy flowers and magazines. According to this reg regulation, we can use the district facilities for recruitment meetings before or after work hours, but not during the work day, and that's only with the okay of the principal or director. Northeast AFT does offer some professional staff development for teachers, and we are not able to start after con until after contract hours, according to number four in this policy. If the seminar is just for the campus teachers, requiring them to wait until the, after the teacher's contract time wastes about 30 minutes. For teachers, time is a very valuable commodity. Please consider allowing the meeting to start 15 minutes after the end of the school day. Putting information in our flyers and employee boxes is another paradox. Number six states that we can send the information to principals and directors by email prior to distribution in the boxes. However, we are not allowed to use the district email system to send it to teachers and school employees. It is our understanding that there will be no censorship of this information. We are not asking for the principal's approval of our information, but we are providing it as a courtesy. Why can't we just wait two days and then email the information directly to the teachers and school employees? We want everyone to be informed. Also, there are time restrictions on when people can be at the boxes to put this information in. If the employee organization member is also an employee of the district, the employee must place the material in mailboxes prior to the scheduled beginning of the workday or following the scheduled workday in. Not just before or after school, but before or after the contract time. Why can't the employee 
just deliver the information in the box during his or her duty-free lunch. This policy just seems to be making getting information to teachers and school employees as difficult as possible. And it's, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Item 13, discussion and possible action regarding board members' request for items to be placed on a future agenda and our request for reports from the administration. Does anyone have anything? Item 14, adjournment, and the time is 820.